In this lesson, we're going to be looking at circles, specifically the radius and diameter of circles and how to use those to find circumference and area. Now some of this might be review from other grades, but we're going to look at it so that we know all the definitions before we look at the formulas and how to calculate these. So to start with, let's look at radius and diameter, just reviewing these. Radius is the distance from the center of a circle to the outside of a circle. No matter what direction we go, the radius is always the same in a circle. So from the center to the outside, that's the radius. The diameter is double that. It's from the outside to the opposite side going through the center. So radius is half of diameter, diameter is double the radius. Both of these are useful for finding the circumference of a circle. Now the circumference is the specific word we use for circles instead of the word perimeter, but it still means the same thing. It's the distance around the outside of the circle. And something that is noteworthy about circumference is that circumference and diameter of a circle always have a ratio of pi. That means if we divide the circumference by the diameter, we would get this number pi, which is about 3.14. That is the true whether the circle is very little or extremely large. It always has that same ratio. And because of that ratio, that allows us to use pi to find the circumference. The circumference equals diameter times pi. Or if we don't have the diameter, maybe we have the radius. Remember the radius is just half the diameter. So we could also do two times the radius times pi, or as you may see it written, two pi r. So we'll look at how to use those formulas, uh, but before we do that, we're also going to look at the formula for the area of a circle, or the space inside of a circle. The area of a circle uses the radius, and it's pi times the radius squared. Remember, squaring means multiplying by itself, so it means pi times radius times radius, or, as it's written shortly, pi r squared. So let's take a look at how to use this, this for formula for circumference and the formula for area to find when we have an actual diameter or area. So the first question we'll look at here is a circle. We see it's given us the length 12 inches all the way across, so that's its diameter, and they ask us to find the circumference and find the area. And notice something here, it says give the exact answer. When it says give exact answer, what that means is we're going to find the answer without plugging it in our calculator for pi, but writing pi in the answer. So we know circumference is diameter times pi. So if we write circumference here equals, our diameter is 12 times pi we can just write our answer as 12 pi, or 12 pi inches. Since it says give exact answer, we're not going to put that in the calculator, but that's our answer, 12 pi inches. If we need to see what that number is, we can put it in the calculator, but that would be our final answer. For area, Remember that we have our formula pi r squared. Here we've been given the diameter, here we need the radius. Remember radius is half of the diameter, so radius would be 12 divided by 2, or 6 inches. So if we look at that, that means here we'd have pi times 6 squared. 6 squared, or 6 times 6, is 36. 
So pi times 36, or we can write that as 36 pi inches squared. And again, that's our final answer. Since it says exact answer, we won't put that in the calculator, but we'll leave it like that. But, so this is what we can do if we have the radius or diameter. But what if it's the other way around? What if we're given the circumference and don't have the radius? Or we have the area and don't have the radius? We can look at this first one that says a circle has a circumference of 30 inches, and then it asks us to find the radius. Well, we know that circumference equals two, or yeah, two pi times the radius. So we can use this formula to help us. We're going to plug 30 in, not to R, but to C. So our circumference is 30, and we know that equals 2 pi times the radius. Now, to get rid of, figure out what this is, we know 2 pi times some radius would equal 30. We have to divide by 2 pi. What's easiest is to start by dividing by 2. So we get 15 equals pi times the radius and then we can divide by pi. And if we do that, we can plug that in on our calculator. And if we do that, we get about 4.77. So our radius is 4.77 inches. Here it didn't say to do an exact answer, so we put it in our calculator and we got the number for that, 4.77. The second one is a very similar problem. It says a circular plate has an area of 50 inches. Find the radius of the plate. Here the only difference is we're given area. So now we're using the formula a equals pi r squared. Just like before though, we're going to put in place of area 50. 50 equals pi r squared. And pi times some radius squared is gonna equal 50. So we have to get rid of this pi. So we divide pi and figure out what that is. 50 divided by pi is 15.92 equals the radius squared. Now remember, to get rid of a square, what we can do is square root. So we find the square root of 15.92, 15.92, and we find that we get 3.99. So our radius is 3.99 inches. It's an important step to remember that square root part, otherwise we'll end up with a much bigger number. But we can see all the problems here. We use the same formulas. We might be getting even the radius, the diameter, circumference, or area, but no matter which we're given, we can use the formulas to be able to find the missing information.